hello friends in this video we'll be discussing objective 2 circular motion sorry uh, yeah circular motion and uh, from H.C. Verma this is your host Hitesh Verma uh, let's start with question number one so an object follows a curved path the following quantities may remain constant during the motion obviously speed can be constant yes uniform circular motion velocity no because the direction of motion as the path is curved will change so the velocity it, at least in direction it will change so velocity must change acceleration yes acceleration may remain constant and the example is uh, a parabolic path under gravity has same acceleration g but the path is curved the magnitude of acceleration yes it is also it may also remain constant in a uniform circular motion or in a projectile motion both in both cases magnitude of acceleration is constant okay let's start with second question assume that the earth goes round the sun in a circular orbit with a constant speed of 30 km per second the average velocity from 1st Jan to 30th June is 9 uh, 30 June 90 is 0 no the average velocity will not be zero because uh, we can see that from 1st June to 30th June this is <coughs> half of the circle so the displacement will be 2 hour and the time interval will be 6 months so it will not be zero you can calculate it by converting months to uh, seconds okay and putting the distance which is not provided uh, talking about average acceleration it will be change in velocity change in velocity will be two times the speed because it will just reverse in direction as the magnitude remains constant it is given in the question so change in velocity will be 60 km per second and the time is again six months average speed is obviously 30 km per second it is given in the question that it remains constant and instantaneous acceleration is towards the Sun because uh, the only force which is acting on the earth is the gravitational attraction from Sun and that will be towards the Sun itself so only correct option is D in the next question the position vector of a particle in a circular motion about origin sweeps out equal area in equal interval of time its uh, velocity remains constant no in a circular motion velocity can't be constant its speed remain constant yes acceleration remain constant no it will change in a direction and tangential acceleration remain constant again the magnitude of tangential acceleration will remain constant so let's talk about this uh, area swept per unit time is area which is half r square theta and time is t so we can say r square by 2 is a constant and theta by t is also a constant because this area per unit time is given as constant so theta by t is nothing but angular speed as angular speed remains constant speed will also be constant and the magnitude of tangential acceleration will be zero as the speed is constant so speed is constant tangential acceleration is zero it will remain zero so we can say that tangential acceleration is constant and speed is constant but not velocity not total acceleration okay in the next question a particle is going in a spiral as shown in the figure with constant speed so the velocity of the particle is constant no it can't be as it is changing in direction uh, the acceleration of the particle will also be changing in its direction so acceleration is also not constant uh, the next is the magnitude of acceleration is constant. Yes, it is correct because the tangential acceleration is zero and uh, Centripetal acceleration will be V square by R speed is also constant and this uh, Radius of the circular path in which it is moving is also constant. So uh, Both V and R are constant. So centripetal acceleration in magnitude will be constant the magnitude of acceleration is decreasing is wrong so the only correct option in this is C let's start with next one 
a car of mass m is moving on a horizontal circular path of radius r at an instant its speed is v and increasing at a rate of a speed increasing at a rate of a means this is a is tangential acceleration and there will be a centripetal acceleration towards the center which is v square by r so the acceleration of the car is towards the center no this is not right in reality if the particle is moving in upward direction so as speed is increasing a tangential will be in upward direction and centripetal acceleration will be towards the center and net acceleration will be somewhere here and friction will also act in this direction so friction will provide the required total acceleration hence friction must be greater than mac which is mv square by r so the magnitude of frictional force on the car is greater than mv square by r is perfectly all right the coefficient of friction between the ground is not less than a by g yes this is also correct you can say as maximum friction is mu mg must be greater than this because if uh, right hand side is more slipping will take place so we can say by this equation we can say mu must be greater than a by g though so the correct options are b and c only in the next question there is a circular road of radius r which is banked for a speed 40 km per hour a car of mass m attempts to go in a circular road the friction coefficient between the tires and the road is negligible the car cannot make a turn without skidding so if the car is going at 40 km per hour the, there will be no requirement of friction or friction will not act you can say that because the banking is done such that if a particle moves with specified speed banking is done such that when turn is taken at specified speed which is 40 km per hour in this case no friction is required or act okay so the only acceleration will be centripetal acceleration it will not move up or down when it is moving with uh, let's say uh, specified speed n cos theta will balance mg and n sin theta will provide you the centripetal acceleration so option a is wrong b if car turns at a speed less than 40 km per hour it will slip down yes it is correct because to make it uh, in this direction n must be equal to mg by cos theta as v decreases n has to decrease if r remains constant so to keep n same r will decrease it will slip down as v decreases r decreases to keep n same which is mg by cos theta hence it will move in a smaller circle so it will come down option c if the car turns at correct speed of 40 the force by the road on the car is equal to mv square by r force on the road by the car is not equal to mv square by r it is basically n which is mg by cos theta or n will be mv square by r sin theta okay so it is not equal to mv square by r option d if the car turns at correct speed the force by the road on the car is greater than mg as well as greater than mv square by r so n we can say n is obviously more than mv square by r because n into sin theta sin theta is less than one so n into something which is less than one is equal to mv square by r similarly we can say n must be greater than cos theta because n oh, mg because n is equal to mg by cos theta and also greater than mv square by r because n is equal to mv square by r by sin theta okay so the only correct options are b and d the person applies a constant force f on a particle of mass m finds that the particle moves in a circle of radius r with uniform speed v uh, as seen from the inner from an inertial frame of reference so 
uh, option A says this is not possible. Obviously, this is possible, but uh, there should be some other forces which are acting on the particle because constant force cannot give you circular motion. So, F there's some B, uh, there must be some other forces acting on the particle. So, option B is correct, A is incorrect. The resultant force on the particle is mv square by r towards the center. Obviously, this is also correct because the net force will provide you the net acceleration, which is centripetal acceleration only as the speed is constant, it initial will be zero. So the net acceleration is v square by r towards the center. Hence, the net force should be mv square by r towards the center. The resultant of other forces varies in magnitude as well as in direction. Yes, this is also correct. We can say that uh, F plus F others is MAC. Though AC is constant in magnitude but changes the direction. So we can say F others is equal to MAC minus F. So this is a constant vector F. This is a constant magnitude vector which is changing in direction continuously. So obviously difference of these two vectors will change in direction as well as in magnitude both ways. Okay. Again, this is a constant magnitude vector which changes in direction continuously and this is a constant vector. Okay. So the difference of these two vectors will change in direction as well as in magnitude. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy.